Hi everyone, I'm Spencer. Um, I'm the founder and a partner of uh, Hashtag Capital. So we are like an electronic trading firm for crypto assets. So one of the things that we do, um, and I think it's a kind of interesting because I was talking to my fellow uh, panelists and speakers earlier, uh, which is if you want to do something in the green community, you really don't have to ask for permission, right? I didn't ask anyone for permission when I started the first GreenCon um, Southeast Asia meetup in Singapore. And of course, the Bitfish guys didn't ask anyone for permission when we wanted to do this um, Bangkok meetup together as well. So if you um, have something to contribute, at a, either as a developer, um, as a fund, or as a miner, or whatever, just throw your head into the ring and contribute, right? So I think that's kind of the model of the green community, and we hope to see more of these kind of efforts going forward. So I think Gary and uh, JK did a really good introduction on many different aspects of the green uh, ecosystem, whether it's the development of um, thesis, the hypothesis that uh, you know is all validated or invalidated, um, some of the you know development community funding issues and so on. So I want to touch a little bit more on something that you know um, a non-developer could also do uh, in the green community just to get things going, right? So I think many people have asked me before, like, how do I set up a green wallet, right? Many people like just like they are like, oh, does that mean that I can only use exchanges? Um, I have to, you know, like ask the miners to store it for me or something, right? So I just kind of want to go through some of those basic things that um, you know can help you guys to get get things going if you're not a very very good developer. So of course, the first thing is follow instructions, right? So you go to the GitHub, um, you know, repository uh, for Mimblewimble. Just search for um, green Mimblewimble um, green wallet, whatever, and then you will probably change on this page, right? If you want to know the URL, it's uh, slash doc slash wiki slash how to use the green wallet. And basically, uh, it's a really good set of instructions, right? Um, if you all just just open terminal or um, or just basically read through the documentation, you should be able to get the node running. And after that, I will show you kind of uh, what you can do there. Um, if you have some difficulty because you have a Windows computer, um, you can refer to an article written, uh, written by the CoinGecko team. They wrote a pretty good article about how to set up a uh, green wallet and get it going. So if you refer to the article, just follow through step by step, uh, you should be able to get there. If not, you can just ping me on Telegram or ping any of the core developers uh, or some of the community members uh, to help you out. Yeah. So once you're done, uh, you know, sort of following the instructions and getting through everything, you can basically um, open up a terminal and just type green to run node. And then what happens is that you'll start by downloading the headers and stuff. And it doesn't, it doesn't take very long, right? It takes maybe like five minutes or one minute usually, right, to get everything going. And once, and once it's done, you'll just say current status running, right? So you know you're good, right? They open up another tab that essentially um, allows you to type uh, and, and query your wallet information, right? So in this case, by typing in green wallet info, you basically get a um, you know, current, um, essentially, um, as of the current block height, what is the balance that you have in your wallet, right? So this is um, the wallet that I have on my, uh, on my MacBook. So basically, um, at a time, I have 0 0.017 green, yay, right? And of course, you can see this uh, interesting thing, which is uh, current spendable, right? So basically, after 10 confirmations, if someone sent you a uh, green, and after 10 confirmations, you'll basically appear in your current spendable amount. And then you can then use that to transact and send to other people. Yep. And basically, um, something that you can do is, uh, if you feel like something is wrong, whatever, you can always run the green wallet check. Um, that's a kind of a useful um, you know, sort of command for me, um, just so that um, everything is good. And I know that my wallet is fine. Um, another thing that uh, you have to do is when you're receiving, um, so when you want to receive green, um, let's say from your computer, you will have to follow the instructions to open the forward the port on your router um, such that basically transactions to port 3415 will go to your computer, right? And after that, um, and it's fairly easy, right? If you use a, a Zeus router, if you use a, um, a I don't know, TP-Link router, it's very straightforward, right? Sometimes it's called virtual server, sometimes it's called port forwarding. Um, it depends on your router settings. And then what happens is that on your terminal side, you just have to do green wallet um, dash E listen, and then basically you're listening for external um, connections to your wallet. And um, of course, over here, it's open. So at a time, if I send my IP address, let's say, for example, 223 dash, um, 223 colon 54 whatever, with a colon of 3415, then someone who sends to the address from an exchange would actually get the green into my wallet, right, which you saw earlier. And then let's say, for example, um, in this case, someone sends his transaction ID to me, uh, you just become, um, you just end up in my wallet, my 400 green that I received from an exchange, for example, right? Um, yeah, so that's kind of a, you know, like a, you know, 
a wallet interface, right? It's not that scary. I know it looks a little bit, uh, you know, uh, weird for like non-developers, but I think um, as long as you go through the steps, it's it's okay. And if you want to find out more information about Grain, of course, I have to plug um, for my friends at CoinMarketCap um, that you can go to CoinMarketCap slash Grain. They have updated the circulating supply such that this changes every second or two, right? Um, and then what happens is that you are able to see some information about the explorers, the message board, the chats, and so on. So if you're lost, just go there and check it out. Yeah, and then of course, um, many people have asked me as well, aside from mining, what can I do, right? Can I buy it on exchanges? The answer is yes, right? Um, these exchanges, so Grin as a community did not pay any exchange listing fee to get on exchanges. You know, exchanges thought that, hey, you'd be a great way to get more people to trade on exchanges. <coughs> and they've been very, very supportive, right? Bittrex, Poloniex, um, Gate, Bitforex, and so on. These guys have all listed Grin on exchange. So. Okay, actually that's my last slide. I, I just realized that. So anyway, I'm Spencer, and we're going to go to, um, to the panel soon. So I think one of the requests that I, I, I got from uh, Gary and the community um, earlier was try to ask as many questions as possible, right? I will start with maybe one or two questions to lead on um, you know, some, some of the answers, but I really hope for you to prepare some questions and ask so that you get kind of your questions answered as well, right?